Gabriel approached this remote Indian village for the first time. He didn't know what he was getting himself into, but he had heard a still, small voice impressing him to go. Gabriel had taken a year off school because of health issues, but a friend told him about a mountain village where people had never heard of Jesus. Even though his health was getting worse, Gabriel felt compelled to go. I told God, uh, since you have sent me here, you have to make me all right. You have to take care of me. I'm completely focusing and depending on you. All my health is soon. After arriving in the village, Gabriel rested and prayed for a week. Then he had to travel a long distance to see a doctor. A blood test revealed that his health had been restored. His prayer answered. Gabriel returned, ready to put all his energy into serving this community. But he quickly realized the challenges facing him. The high altitude made it cold. He had to hike to get water, and the villagers knew nothing about basic health principles. See, we see a child. The face is so dirty, and he's playing with the mud. And here we see a lot of wounds. I don't know how I'm going to support him the medicine. It's feeling so cold. It is so cold here. Although Gabriel had permission from village leaders, many opposed his presence. But the children loved him. There was no school in the village, so Gabriel turned his home into a classroom. Here now, most of them they are beginning to write. They are writing. They know how to write already A B C D, and also they know how to read. And now they are writing some of them, one to hundred, and also a spelling. It was very difficult for them to accept me, and it took、uh, almost four months to be friends with them. So when they finally accepted me. As part of the villager, that makes me very, very happy. The villagers started inviting Gabriel to spend time with them. He is cutting Eurovision banana. We're going to eat banana flower tonight. We're running out of money and out of vegetable, so we are going to eat the banana. Soon, Gabriel was having conversations about health principles. Sometimes they even talked about faith. When they began to ask me. What did you have in your life that makes you so happy? Then,、uh, then I began to share the love of Jesus Christ. The villagers enjoyed hearing about his hope in Jesus. It was a liberating concept they had never heard before. Many accepted Jesus and started meeting together on Sabbath. Wonderful doors were opening, but Gabriel still got discouraged at times. He felt lonely. One outlet was to visit a market nearby from time to time. But even this came with challenges. They're smoking this old lady. I can bear the smell anymore. But I just have to adjust. I don't know. Sometimes I get confused why God sent me such place. This is the place of my mission field. But Gabriel never gave up. He began hiking to other nearby villages as far as he could walk to spread the good news. Even I, feeling there. But I won't give up. I'll go and meet and tell them about the love of Jesus. After this year of ministry, Gabriel knew that he only wanted one thing: to follow God's will for his life. His desire to delve deeper into the Bible led him to enroll in the School of Theology at Spicer Adventist University. When I went to the village,、uh, I knew that my health is very poor. Then I might possibly even die. But I have a patience to reach the gospels to the people where it is unreached. Today, Gabriel is happy to be studying at Spicer, a school dedicated to teaching and training students for a higher purpose. His dream is to become a full-time church planter, and thanks to a missionary family sponsoring his studies, that dream is set to become a reality. Not far from the Spicer campus, a community had no school. Just like Gabriel taught his village children, the university has reached out and opened a classroom. The gratitude of parents shows that so much more is needed. This quarter, a portion of your 13 Sabbath offering will help build a new school building for this needy community. Please pray for this opportunity near Spicer Adventist University. Pray that more people will find hope in Jesus, just like the villagers Gabriel ministered to. Thank you for supporting the 13th Sabbath offering and the mission of the Seventh Day Adventist Church around the world.
Thank you to everyone for voting in this year's 2020 election. Because you turned out in a record numbers, our voices were heard. With God, nothing is impossible. Because you voted, we have a new president-elect and the first black female vice president-elect. Now, we have to take it to the next level because there is still work to be done. A special election will be held on January 5th, 2021 to decide the fate of Georgia's two remaining U.S. Senate seats. You can still make a difference by helping to get souls to the polls to vote. All eyes are on Georgia, and this is the most critical Senate runoff election in the history of our country. So, everyone get ready to vote, vote, vote again. The fate of hardworking, disenfranchised, unemployed, uninsured, senior citizens, homeless, and hungry Americans hang in the balance of the two Senate seats up for election in Georgia. We need to pray that God will flip those seats on the side of justice and mercy. You can speak true to power and exercise your God-given right to vote. For your safety and convenience, you can request an absentee ballot at www.mvp.sos.ga.gov and turn it in by mail or in person, or you can do early voting, which begins on December 14, 2020. Everyone, please show out and vote in the Georgia Special Senate runoff election. Let's flip those Senate seats. If you have any questions, please contact your religious liberty leader, Elder Chandra Reddish at comm at maranathasda.com. My name is Lolo Harris, and I'll be your worship leader today. Today, we're going to try something different, a call and response style song. If I say, I'm going to heaven, what would you say? So am I. Well, what if I say, I love the Lord? What would you say? So do I. Amen. So we're going to sing Heaven Medley. Heaven Medley. It's a highway to heaven. Um, when we all get to heaven, oh yes, those are some good ones. Okay, let's try that. I'm going to heaven. So am I. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I'm walking up the king highway. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, I'm walking up the king highway. Well, it's a highway to heaven. Oh, it's a highway to heaven. Oh, I'm walking up the king highway. Listen, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I'm walking up the king highway. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. I read my Bible. I read the Bible. I read my Bible. I read my Bible. Say hallelujah. Amen. Well, I'm walking up the king highway. The verse. Mm -hmm. Sing the one that love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion, bright and blessed, 
feel free that's what's the place Ooh, i love the lord i love the lord i really really love him i really really love him say hallelujah amen well i'm walking up the king highway you know what else i'm going to heaven i'm going to heaven i'm going to heaven i'm going to heaven hallelujah amen well i'm walking up the king highway oh yes i am oh yes i am i'm walking up the king Highway. Yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. We're not finished. Uh, I'm going to heaven. So am I. I love the Lord. So do I. When I get to heaven, I'm going to put on my shouting shoes and shout all over God's heaven. What about you? Are you looking forward to that day when Jesus comes breaking through the clouds? I know it right now. I'm going to heaven. I'm going, going to heaven. I'm going, going to heaven. Yes, I'm going to heaven. Hey, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I'm walking up the king's highway. Oh, yes, I am walking up the king's highway. Oh, yes, I am. I'm walking up the king's highway. Hallelujah. I'm walking up the King's Highway. Yes, sir. I'm looking forward to that day. Amen. Hello and uh, Merry Christmas, which is over, but uh, just want to wish you a happy holiday again. Thank you for joining us for our virtual, our virtual communion service. And we're glad that we could end the year in a positive note. Aren't you glad that we serve a Jesus who doesn't forget us? And the miracle of him getting us through this year. Thank you, Jesus, for how he's dodged all the bullets that the devil has shot at us to get us to this point this year. We all have something to say thank you, Jesus, for and that is that we are living on the top side of this earth, still waiting on the second coming of God. I'm glad this pandemic did not shake our faith, aren't you? At this time, we're going to begin and uh, with a word of prayer. I thought that it'd be good for us to thank God and then pray for those who are suffering at this hour. For those who have grieved this year because of loved ones that have been lost. And as you had seen that the text says it scrolled up all of the people we've been praying for. Wanted to make sure we added Sister Morale that we have got the word last night that her sister passed from the COVID. Then last week we had uh, Brother Derek Jeter who had a sister also that recently passed. So we want to remember them in prayer. Sister Arno, Sister Jewel Sterling, and the list goes on, and of course, my sweet wife. Let's pray, shall we, as we begin our service. Father in heaven, we just want to say thank you right now for the miracle that you wrought in getting us to this point in our existence on earth. Thank you, O oh God, through all of the difficulty we've all been through this year, dodging the COVID virus, getting beyond, O oh God, the sicknesses, and even those who did get sick and did recover, we thank you for that. Lord, it has been very difficult but you have held our hand all the way through this. And Father, for those who didn't make it, we're praying that their families would still hold on to your unchanging hand even now. 
knowing that you have something glorious planned for the future. So God, hear our prayers on their behalf. Their hearts may be heavy, but yet at the same time, you still can fill their hearts with gladness because soon and very soon, we're going to see you and their loved ones are guaranteed in Christ. They will be able to see them again. Father, we want to pray for Jewel Sterling specifically this morning. As she's trying to get better, we pray that the medical professionals will do what they need to do to assist her. Sister Arnold, the same way, want to pray for her recovery. And then, oh God, I would ask that you would heal a broken heart of two of our members, specifically Sister Morrell, who lost her sister in New York, couldn't get beyond the COVID. So I pray that you will lift up that family as they make arrangements to uh, bury her. We pray that all things will fall in place. And at the same time that a message would get through the family, Jesus is coming soon to fix this. We pray for the Jeter family, who's heartbroken of a loving sister as well. Oh God, we ask that you would lift that saddened heart as well. And also that you will help them really believe this gospel truth of one of these good old days, Jesus is coming to take care of this matter. Father, bless our communion service. Hear our prayers on the behalf of all of our relatives, friends, cousins, members, children, spouses. Oh God, I'm just throwing it all out there. Hear our prayers, oh God. So may you bless our service. We say thank you for the, the wonderful opportunity to have our sins acquitted, forgiven. Oh God, and thank you for Jesus who thought enough of us to take them away. So as we participate in this service, help us by faith to know this is what Jesus did for us. In Christ's name, amen. Our speaker this morning, or this, for this service, is none other than our beloved assistant pastor, Avery Anderson, a young man that I believe God has his hands all over and the Holy Spirit reigns in his life. He has a message for us. And so after we hear this wonderful sound of God's servant. We pray and ask that the Lord will use this young man to be a blessing to all of us. Hear the message God has sent our way through this inspired young preacher. Love Jesus will never ever lose his power. The blood that Jesus shed for me. Way back on the Calvary, the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never, never lose its power. 
for it soothes my doubts and it comes all of my fears and and it dries dries away all of my tears Ooh, the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never 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 lose is power or it reaches to the highest mountain mountain and it flows to the lowest, lowest valley. Oh, yeah, yes, the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never. Never lose its power. Mm-hmm. For it reaches to the highest, to the highest mountain, mm-hmm. mountain. To the lowest, lowest valley. Oh, yes, it does. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never, never, never lose. It will never, 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 never lose. No, it will never, never, never lose. It's power. Oh, yeah. Mm. Never lose its power. Never lose its power. The blood of Jesus cleanses me. The blood of Jesus cleanses me. The blood of Jesus makes everything, everything, everything okay. It will never, never lose. It will never, never lose. Uh, it will never, never lose. Never, never, never lose its power. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Seasons greetings. How many of us can say that God is good this morning? You know, there are so many things that we can thank God for this morning, from being alive, being in our right minds. And if you're watching this stream, you ought to be thankful as well. You know, there are a lot of things that we're expected to happen, that we were expected to happen in 2020, but things didn't pan out the way that we thought that they would. But God is still good nonetheless. And this morning, we're going to take a look at a passage of scripture that that we use to affirm our faith, but also is very important when it comes to approaching the service of humility that we're gonna partake in this morning. 
And if you have your Bibles, if you have your tablets, if you have your phones, I'd like for you to turn to the book of John. And we're going to look at John chapter 3 and verse 16. Some of us can repeat it from memory, but for those that it's not too familiar for, you can follow along in your Bibles. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. This morning, I'll be speaking under the sermonic title, When It Matters the Most. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we're so thankful for this time of worship. We're so thankful, God, that we are going to be approaching the communion table. And Lord, as we open up the Bible, as we open up your word, my prayer is that it will transform us, that it will renew us, and most importantly, that it will restore us. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For most of us, there has been a moment, a time when we were at our wit's end. What I'm talking about this moment, uh, this morning, is that there are moments when we are about to just give up, a time when we wanted to throw in the towel, moments when the deadline was fast approaching and we had no solution on how to get out of our mess. We might have been looking for the funds to pay a bill. Uh, before they were going to cut the lights off. We might have been looking for someone to fix our vehicle when the transmission went out. We might have been looking for someone to help mend a relationship that, that, that wasn't working. Whatever it is, whatever it was, it felt like there was no solution in sight. And no matter what the result of what was going on, we were in need of someone to step in and help us. Some of us might have uh, I've made some phone calls. Others might have called their parents, uh, uh, but I would be reminded that some of us might have called on the name of Jesus. And unfortunately, others might have forgotten to call on his name. Whatever your situation was, this morning, I, I wanted to briefly talk about moments in our lives when it mattered the most to us. And looking to Jesus uh, we must not forget that, that Jesus, like us, was in a situation that he needed help as well. The Bible reminds us that there was a situation that was on the heart of Jesus. You see, in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 8, uh, God was walking in the midst of the garden, and, and Adam and Eve hid themselves from God. That, 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 that in that moment, that there was something building, that there was something that was developing that would eventually be on the shoulders of Jesus. Something that would require a lot of him, something that would require, require a sacrifice. You see, in the grand scheme of things, when Adam and Eve partook of the fruit, they did not realize the repercussions of their actions and, and what it would eventually mean for Jesus. What they did did not come with the expectations that they assumed would have come to them. You see, you, you have to understand that their expectations was that they were going to be like God, that their eyes were going to be opened, that they were going to see and do things that were above what they were doing currently, that, there were, that their responsibilities would change. And for some of us, we get caught up in the expectations uh, that we assume things will come to us because we believe it will be so. So we'll say things and do things based off of those expectations. And let me explain. We know that we just had Christmas yesterday. And for some of us, including our children, we will behave in such a way to receive the maximum amount of gifts if we're on our best behavior. So we end up being extra nice leading up to the day so that when we exchange gifts, we would get what we assume the person would gift us. This, of course, was how things were pre-pandemic where we could come together as a, as, a, as a group. But we do this all the time. It's not just limited to Christmas. It happens when our birthdays are about to roll around. It happens when our anniversary is about to roll around. We just expect things. We expect things as human beings. We expect uh, relationships to flourish. We expect bonuses for our hard work. We expect the recognition when we do our best work. It's part of our human expectation. And this is what was the downfall of Adam and Eve. Their expectation and assumptions outweighed their obedience. 
I'm going to repeat that if you missed that. Their expectations and assumptions outweighed their obedience. They were more willing to do what they thought would benefit them in that moment than to obey God and what he instructed them to do. In that moment, what mattered most to them was their own personal gain. Their, their expectation outweighed their obedience, and they were willing to listen to the serpent and do the selfish thing and eat of the fruit. You know, there are several things that we ourselves are willing to do and compromise our obedience uh, to God because we have a list of expectations that are outside of the will of God. We are willing to make lists, make vision boards, and, and some of these things that we desire for ourselves are outside of the will of God. But because it is something that matters to us, we think that it is okay and we go along with it. This morning, I, I'm not going to go over uh, what those specific things are, but we should know by now what is good for us and what is wrong for our relationship with God. Today, I wanted to look at this familiar passage of scripture because I know that God has some things that he wants us to know this morning. The Bible says that God so loved the world. This passage of scripture, of course, we know is very popular. One that is memorized, and we use it week to week to affirm our faith. This passage of scripture begins with a very deep message that God so loved the world. You see, God didn't want to wait for the world to turn to him before he showed his love to the world. God didn't want us uh, want for us to ever think that his love was subject to a, a long list of expectations. He didn't want us to think that, that, that we had to do a whole bunch of things in order to receive his love. He loved us before we even knew of him. He loves us with an everlasting love. He loves us with an undying love. Can you say amen with me this morning? You must understand historically that, 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 that the Jewish nation did not believe that God loved the world because they held the notion that God had only love for Israel, that God only loved them, the chosen nation. So you must understand that, that God loving the world uh, that, that, that the universal offer of salvation, the free gift of salvation, and, and the life of Jesus was countercultural. It was revolutionary. It didn't make sense to them. But God's love runs deeper than any cultural ob obligation or thought. It reaches to everyone. And his love was so deep that he gave his only begotten son. And, and just imagine with me what that had to feel like. Honestly, think about what you have to do, what kind of headspace you have to be in to give up your child. When I think about my current situation with my son, I can't imagine giving him up for a sacrifice. And not only just being a sacrifice, but the torture that he would have to go through for people who really don't deserve it, for, or, or for people who, who say that they're Christians, but it's only for a show. And that's a lot to deal with your flesh and blood dying for the world. You know, what an ex uh, expression of love. What a gift that is that God has given us. And, and many of us have, 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 have given gifts and exchanged gifts with each other, with yesterday being Christmas. A and here we see in scripture, God giving up his only son. God's love didn't just feel for us. The, the sin that we created, the pain that we feel, it wasn't just feelings for God. You see, there was an action behind it. He, he did something about it. He gave us the most precious thing to him, his only son. And, and how many of us would have given our child for the world? I'm not sure that there's anyone out there that's listening, anyone that's watching that would do that. But that is what God did for us. He offered his son as a substitute for us he offered him as a sacrifice. And the verse continues to show us who are the recipients of God's love. It, it says that whoever believes in him, and this is important, I need you to, to listen carefully. We must understand that God loves the world, but the world does not receive or benefit from that love until they believe in Jesus. You see, Jesus is the gift, but if you don't believe in the gift, it will not benefit you. And I must be very clear this morning that that belief is not just merely acknowledging or understanding Jesus, 
But this belief is something that is much deeper, something that requires more than just head knowledge. It, it, it means to trust. It means to cling to. It means to rely on. It means to give everything that you got. Believing in Jesus requires some devotion. It requires some conviction. You see, when you truly believe in Jesus, things happen to you. You no longer do the things that you used to do. You treat people differently. You understand and realize that this world is not your final home. You learn to love differently. Something happens when you believe in Jesus. And that leads to, to the end of this passage in, 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 that we're looking at today, that if you believe in him, you should not perish, but have everlasting life. You see that phrase, that sentence, you should not perish, points to the intention of God's love, that his love will actually save you from eternal destruction. You see, God would have it that, 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 we, should, that we should not perish. So his love was given to us as an opportunity to be in partnership with him, that, that we can live with him forever, which speaks to the duration of his love for us and that it is everlasting, that his love will never end. And we, we honestly can't even quantify or understand what, what love like that means or, or what love like that is like because our love can fade away so quickly. It can grow so cold. But God's love will never end. It will never change. And, and, and it's interesting that 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 God's love being so vast, being so pure, that he would have given up his son for us. And this morning, we're, we're going to the table of communion and Jesus was given up for us so that we can experience that eternal love from the father. We just celebrated uh, the season of Jesus's birth, but the significance of Jesus's birth is overshadowed by our need and fact that Jesus had to die in order for us to live. You see, God knew this. He knew the importance of Jesus' life. He knew what it was going to take to save us. He knows what matters most. And as much as it was going to hurt him, he sent his son anyway. And we would never have thought to do that. I mean, look at what happened when Adam and Eve finally came out from hiding and spoke to God. You see, Adam blamed Eve. And Eve blamed the snake. So no one thought about the other person. No one was willing to take the fall for what happened. But God loved us so much that he sent his son to die to save us. That is why the sacraments are so important. His body and his blood. That is why it's so important that we remember what it took. That we remember how valuable Jesus was to God. That his body and blood was given up. That death had to happen in order for us to be saved. That's the separation that Jesus had to experience. Uh, uh, There's the, a the separation that he had to experience so that it wasn't in vain, that, that if we believe that we can be saved when Jesus comes back. See, Jesus had all of this expectation on him. He, he had to endure death for us. It was a lot that was riding on, on Jesus going through with it. There were prophets and men of God that foretold of a man that was coming a Messiah. It was as if there was a symbolic clock that was ticking, that was counting down the time that Jesus had to give up his life. And that is why timing is so important when it matters the most. You must realize that Jesus was part of a divine timeline that needed to take place. Jesus had to go to grow and develop. His earthly ministry was vitally important. He had to do certain things to make sure people understood how to live and what was important. The, there were things that, that needed to happen before the time he had uh, uh, to come and die for, for us. And it's just like in basketball. You know, the first couple of points aren't really important. But talk about the significance of the two points that you need to score with the, with the clock winding down so that you can take the lead. You see, Jesus understood what it was going to take. He knew what needed to be done. He knew all of the things that he needed to accomplish before he approached the cross. And there were several moments along the way that he could have done something else, something selfish, something less painful. But no, he chose to go all the way for us. He chose to go to the cross for you and for me. 
The Bible says in John chapter one and verse 29, that when John sees Jesus approaching, he says, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And this statement is so interesting to me because it, it was a phrase that many ar uh, around him did not fully understand or comprehend the gravity of those words. You see, Jesus knew the sacrifice and God knew the sacrifice that he was making for us. And, and when I talk about timing and the importance of when it matters the most, Jesus up until that point was not in a position to make the substitution for us. Jesus's body before the crucifixion wasn't enough. It was not until he died and rose again that we are able to receive the free gift of salvation. It meant a lot, and God knew that. And we must be reminded this morning of how significant it was. Jesus knew how important his sacrifice would be. He says in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 39, pass this cup from me. The separation from God was murder for him. His death in that moment was a separation from the Trinity. In that moment, his divinity was on a pause. Jesus was not in direct connection with his father. He did that for us when it mattered the most. We must never forget what it took for God to save us. That as we approach the table of communion, that we remember what it took. That the cross was not something that Jesus did, just did because he was wrongly convicted, but that he was a sacrifice for you and for me. He did it when it mattered the most. So let us never forget who he is. In those moments when the bills are due, in those moments when we don't know what to do, that we remember God's love for us. In those moments when we remember those that have passed away with this year being so hard for different families. In those moments when it just feels like you're always arguing with your significant other, that we remember to hold on to his unchanging hands. For many of us, we're looking forward to a better 2021. We're looking for things to get better. Some of us have already developed lists of our expectations for the new year. And I would be remiss to remind us that whatever expectations we have for ourselves, regardless of what they are, that we look at them through the lens of God. And when we look at them through that lens, some things that we, that we might have made a priority might take some steps back because there are some things that we need to take more, that needs to take more of our attention. Things that, that will help us to make it to the kingdom as opposed to building up things on this earth. The songwriter says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. You see, God is there for us when it matters the most. And we might not understand the full scope of what he allows to happen, but he is sovereign nonetheless. And I'm so thankful for the love of God. And I know that you're thankful as well. So this morning, if you're thankful for the love of God, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads as I pray this morning. Father in heaven, we're so thankful that you care so much for us, that you sent your only son to die for us so that we can be saved. I'm so thankful that the requirements are not a long list that there isn't a set of prerequisites that we have to apply to, that we have to send in our applications, but that if we believe in your son, that we will be saved. Father God, I don't know who is on the stream, who are, who's watching or you know how many people there are, Father God, but I know that someone is out there that has become convicted because of this message. And this morning, Father God, I pray for that individual. I pray for that family. I pray for, for all of those that are watching, Father God, that you would be there for them when it matters the most. Help us not to forget, Father God, to call on your name when we need you. And most importantly, Father God, I pray that you will ready our hearts for the communion service that we're about to go into. Lord, I know that this year has been difficult and we're looking for things to be better in 2021. Lord, there is no guarantee that things will get better. But one thing I know for sure is that your love will never end and that your love will never change. And that as long as we believe and trust in you, 
that you will take care of us. So no matter what the outcomes will be, no matter what happens, Father God, we know that you're sovereign and that you're, you're still in control. So help us, Father God, to believe and to trust in you completely. And Father God, when you crack the sky, when you come back for us, Father God, that we will be ready to, to meet you in the air. Father God, bless us today. Thank you so much for your love. And thank you for spending time with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen, amen. I'd like to thank the families that participated in the foot washing. Uh, we really appreciate your participation and we're thankful that you're able to share that with us today. Uh, now we will transition into the ceremony of uh, communion and we're gonna be having the prayer and, the, sorry, the scripture reading and the prayer for the bread and the wine and that'll be done by uh, Elder Roland, Elder Shirley Roland and Elder Luther, Luther Roland and we'll be going to them now. I will be reading 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 and 24 in your hearing. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Shall we pray? Our Father, we are so thankful this morning for what you have done for us and given your only begotten Son so that we might not, on, might not only have this abundant life, but that we might have eternal life. For we realize that he was wounded for our transgressions bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we were healed so we are so thankful for the the body of our lord jesus christ amen now this time i will be reading in your hearing first corinthians Chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. After the same manner, also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Let us pray, our Father and our God. We thank you for giving your son, Jesus, who was willing to lay down his life for us. So grateful that he shed his blood, a blood that never loses its power, a blood that washes white as snow, a blood that reaches to the highest mountain in the lowest valley. He shed his blood for us. And we are grateful for the blood. Father, wash us today. Then help us to always remember the sacrifice that was made. Change this juice from his natural use to his spiritual use. use. And may we be drawn closer to thee as a result of participating in this service. We do ask it in the word and name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God's love made tangible. It was not just for God to say he loved us. God wanted to prove it in a tangible way. He wanted us to touch it, feel it, and taste it as well. And that's why he said, this is my body. I have given it for you. My love is expressed more than just by my lips. It's expressed by what I do for you. My body. He says, taste it and see how much. I love you. Let's partake. Then Jesus says that life is in the blood. Can you imagine having a body with no blood in it? Well, of course, you would cease to be. 
But the blood carries from one end of our body to the next, all the nutrition we need to keep living. It helps feed our heart. God's love made tangible says, this symbolizes my blood. Not only did I make you, but I also died for you. My blood covers your unrighteousness. And with this blood, I have recognized your availability to be saved in Christ. So, once again, God's love being made tangible. He says, drink ye all of it. As we wind down this service, isn't it wonderful that only not only are we celebrating the birth of Christ at this time, but we're also celebrating the redemption of that baby that was born. He was born to die. Oh, what a legacy that God thought enough of us to give his son. Give him a body you'll have forever to identify with us. Do you know, folk, we are in the Trinity in Christ? We are a new family member. And God says, I want you to stay that way. Not only did I make you, but I redeemed you to be so. And at this hour, your sins symbolically have been forgiven. I don't know about you, but what a Christmas. What a holiday season to celebrate. Not only of giving gifts, but getting the best gift. A promised eternal life. I sure hope you take this seriously. And I sure hope that you'll embrace a God that thinks that much of you. Even in a season like this, God is crazy about you. May God bless you. Thank you. And thank the Lord. Amen. Broken hearts and lies 
can be mended anew just with one touch dear lord from you let the oil and the fine bring a healing divine to every wounded soul let it Welcome to The Mix, where you are informed about meetings, banquets, plays, community events, evangelistic meetings, concerts, ministry updates, and so much more. The Maranatha Information Exchange, where you're always kept in the mix. Do you pay Georgia income taxes? Then turn your taxes into student scholarships. GAAA would like to invite you to lower your tax liability funds and redirect them to GAAA. These funds will provide much needed scholarships for students who would like to attend GAAA. Instead of paying the taxes you owe to the IRS, make that donation to GAAA and you will get a tax credit on your 2021 taxes if you donate by 12 30 2020. If you make a donation after December the 30th, you will get the tax credit on your taxes for 2022. You can submit the form by going to www.aretescholars.org slash donate. Click the reserve your credit on the Georgia button and follow the instructions to complete the form. Be sure to pull down the link in the make donations to box and choose BCJA DAAA DEJA. Arete Scholars will submit the request to the Department of Revenue on your behalf. Act quickly, act promptly, act now, act today. Frontline workers are an essential part of our everyday. This statement cannot be more true, especially this year, 2020. We are so grateful for your hard work and dedication during this COVID-19 pandemic year. It is a privilege to have our very own Maranatha Healthcare Frontline Workers. We are asking for the following information as soon as possible. Please submit your name, profession, and facility you work for, if allowed, and a picture to our communications department, comm at maranathasda.com. The Disability Ministry Department encourages you to bring a ray of hope to those in need by offering special prayer, sending cards, making phone calls, 
or just giving words of encouragement to share God's love for all those who are disabled or sick or just going through difficulties in these trying times. From the Disability Ministry Department to your family, we wish you a happy and safe holiday. Family Life Ministries presents Soulmates by Andrea Wiley. This presentation documents the realities of single women around the world and what they face each day as they live their lives through the lens of what God has for them. I'm 52, living single. I was envious of friends who were getting married, it seemed like right and left, and I was upset with God. Being single and being satisfied is a process. It doesn't come overnight. I said to the Lord, I've done it enough on my own. Your turn. Join us December 26, 2020 at 5 p.m. on YouTube Maranatha SDA Atlanta for this gripping journey of trials and triumphs of unforgettable, successful, saved, and single African-American women. 2020 has been a year with many losses and challenges, but we can truly say God has been with us, giving us strength and hope for every trial. To culminate this year, Maranatha will be having a New Year's Eve service to reflect on where God has brought us from and to give him praise for keeping us in spite of it all. Join us on Thursday, December 31st on YouTube at Maranatha SDA Atlanta or on Facebook Live promptly at 5 p.m. as we pray out the old year and ask for strength, direction, prosperity, protection, and guidance from the upcoming year. We hope to see you there. Thank you everyone for joining us for our services today. My prayer is that God has blessed you in some way and, and through this communion service that you enjoyed yourself. I know that this year has been trying for a lot of us, but God is still good and he's still in control. So I'd just like to thank you for joining us. And if you have special prayer requests, if you are seeking to, to profess your faith, if you're looking for some answers, you can email us at sec at maranathasda.com and we'll be connected with you. Uh, we get prayer requests all the time. And as, as a pastoral staff, we come together and we lift these up to God on your behalf. So if you have any prayer requests, any special requests, uh, if you'd like to get Bible study, email us at sec at maranathasda.com and we can connect to, to you through that medium. Now I'm just going to close with prayer as we close out this service. And again, thank you for joining us and thank you for staying on the stream. Uh, we truly appreciate it. And remember, please subscribe. Please share this with your friends and family uh, because this communion service is not just for right now. For those that might have missed it, they can participate uh, during this week and even on into 2021. But we thank you for joining us. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for all that you do. We're so thankful for your love and we're so thankful for your mercies. Be with us throughout the remain of this Sabbath, God. Continue to keep us, continue to bless us, Father God. We're so thankful for all that you do. We don't deserve it. And we truly, truly can't wait for you to come back. Thank you for your love and your mercies. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Mm -hmm.